everyone, welcome back. This episode will mark the beginning of our acute reporting series. In this series, we will discuss various presentations that you come across in your acute reporting lists. And we would learn to navigate through complex imaging scenarios. So let's begin. Today's episode is about an elderly patient who presented with abdominal distension and vomiting with query bowel obstruction. In my routine practice, before looking at the CT scans, particularly in emergency scenarios, I first look at the scanogram. The scanograms generally have a wealth of information, so it's useful to look at them to get a quick overview of the situation. So what do you see on the scanogram here? Well, first thing to notice is dilated small and large bowel loops. I'm saying it both small and large bowel loops because I see dilated bowel loops both in the center as well as in the periphery of the abdomen. Do you see any gas in the rectum? There looks like a bit of mottling there, isn't it? But we don't see very much gas in this area. What else do you see on the scanogram? Well, you can see a rod in the left femur, which suggests that this patient probably had some fracture. And I can't see the femoral head clearly compare the right and the left side. Can you see the femoral head? There looks like some material here with some calcification. It looks like they probably had a fracture dislocation. And this looks chronic, isn't it, given there is this calcification and deformity. All right, what else do you see? Do you see this linear opacity here? This looks like some vascular calcification. This scanogram is basically telling you that this patient has existing comorbidities. Now let's start looking at the CT scan. So this is a CT scan of abdomen and pelvis performed with intravenous contrast. We have not performed chest in this patient due to his specific symptoms related to abdomen. Okay, so in my routine practice, I first of all scroll through the whole series to grossly look at the site of abnormality and see what I noticed in first go. Well, you can appreciate small and large bowel loops are dilated. They are fluid filled and the stomach and the distal esophagus is also dilated. So there is definitely bowel obstruction. Whenever we see bowel obstruction, first important thing that we need to exclude is any element of perforation. So let's start looking for any free gas. Well, I don't see any free gas anywhere, not under the diaphragmatic surfaces, not in retroperitoneum or elsewhere in the abdomen and pelvis. Some people prefer to look at it with a lung window. It's entirely up to you but on lung windows either we don't see any evidence of free gas. Okay. What would you like to see next? Obviously the cause and site of obstruction. Now there are two ways to do it. You can either start from the most proximal part of the bowel or you can start distally. Uh, we can see multiple dilated small bowel loops. They are filled with fluid and have air fluid levels. And then the colon is obviously also distended you can see through and through. So what is the cause of obstruction? As we go further um, towards the distal part of the colon, especially starting in the descending colon, you can see that there is increasing element of fecal impaction. So descending colon has a lot more fecal loading as compared to ascending colon. Okay, so we will continue going further down. This is the sigmoid colon. It shows even more fecal, load, fecal loading. And then at the rectosigmoid junction, we can see almost development of fecaloma. And the rectum, do you remember what we saw on the scanogram? There was a bit of mottling in the rectal area. So this is that part, isn't it? Rectum clearly shows significant fecal impaction. Now, how do I know this is fecal impaction? Well, first of all, rectum is significantly dilated. Let's measure what is the diameter well it measures at least 9.5 centimeter let's get rid of this measurement and if you look at its content you see multiple areas of gas intermingled with soft tissue and fluid so this is a characteristic appearance of fecal matter when you see this much fecal matter impacted in the part of colon which is distended you must think about fecaloma. Fecaloma is basically hardened stool, which is quite desiccated, and especially in elderly and in patients with several comorbidities or chronic constipation, this can lodge in certain part of the colon, obstructing its lumen and resulting in retrograde obstruction. 
Here we can see that rectum is distended by a large amount of impacted fecal matter. And we can say with confidence that this is a site of obstruction because we can see upstream bowel dilatation. Well, that's sorted then, but then we need to look for any complications. So do you remember any complication related to impacted fecal matter? Well, one thing is obviously bowel obstruction, isn't it? But more worrisome consequence is development of stercoral colitis. Well, stercoral colitis is a condition in which this hardened fecal matter compresses upon the wall of the involved colonic segment, resulting in its edema due to obstruction of its blood supply. And this can eventually lead to ulcer formation, ischemia and perforation. And the perforation related to stercoral colitis can be very nasty. It, it has a very high associated mortality rate, which reaches up to 35%. So to call it stercoral colitis, you must know how to differentiate it from a simple fecal impaction. So how do you differentiate? Well, first of all, well, the diameter of involved segment be more than six centimeter, but this feature you can see in both fecal impaction and stercoral colitis. However, even the simple fecal impaction, if it has this much diameter, there is very high chance of it developing into stercoral colitis. So this must always be flagged. So we saw that the diameter of rectum in this area is about more than nine centimeter. So we have one red flag already. So how else do you differentiate? Second thing we need to look at is the wall of involved colonic segment itself. So let's look at it in a bit more detail. As I go down in the rectum, what do you see here? Obviously all this material is impacted fecal matter, isn't it? But what about this area? Do you see some thickening in the colonic wall? And if I measure it, let's see, I mean, in this area, I think it's a bit more clearly visible. And if I measure how much it is, it's about 0.9 centimeter. So this is another difference between a simple fecal impaction and stercoral colitis that in stercoral colitis, the colonic wall thickening is more than three mm, roughly. So now we have two red flags. We have rectum, which is distended, and then we have rectal wall thickening, which is more than three millimeter. What else do we need to look for? We need to look for fat around the rectum itself. Now, obviously the rectum is very significantly distended, so you don't see much of the mesorectum around it. That's why you're not able to see fat haziness here. I mean, this part of the fat is outside the mesorectum, and that's why the fat haziness has probably not reached in this area. But what about this area? Do you see a bit of fat haziness here? Let me zoom it for you. Okay, so can you see this fat haziness and thickening in the presacral area? So this suggests that there is edema in the rectal wall due to significant compression by the impacted fecal matter. And we have already excluded uh, perforation. So in this patient, the conclusion of my report would say that this patient has small and large bowel obstruction secondary to impacted fecal matter in rectum with surrounding rectal wall thickening and perirectal fat haziness suggesting stercoral colitis. And do you think this is an emergency or not? Well, this is certainly an emergency. Why? Because the stercoral colitis, if it is not corrected timely, and by corrected, I mean, if the fecal matter in the rectum is not disimpacted, either manually or through the use of enema, then this can lead to perforation and which I have already mentioned that can have very high morbidity and mortality. So this is an emergency. We need to inform the referring services that this patient requires urgent disinfection of the fecal matter. Many of these patients end up in surgery as well, but overall prognosis is very poor. All right, few things about stercoral colitis here. So is there a particular group where you should suspect stercoral colitis? Well, stercoral colitis is mainly seen in elderly and those patients who have coexisting comorbidities like chronic constipation, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and other electrolyte imbalance, all of these changes lead to slowing of the uh, bowel movement and fecal impaction. As the fecal matter, as it passes through the colon and its motility has reduced, then it has more chances to desiccate and dry up due to continuous absorption of water. This results in hardened fecal matter, which is very difficult to evacuate and results in impaction. And many a times because of their associated comorbidities, the history and clinical examination can be very confusing. So in elderly patients presenting with bowel obstruction, first thing that you should think of is obviously cancer. 
the second most common cause of bowel obstruction is diverticulitis or um, uh, volvulus in uh, if the site of obstruction is colon but stercoral colitis fecal impaction in, is also very likely possibility in patients in elderly patients with abundant comorbidities and chronic constipation okay so that's that about stercoral colitis and uh, as usual i generally after looking at the primary abnormality and describing it i always look at the rest of the imaging to see what else is going on so did you notice any other thing well in the lung fields you can see that there are some airspace changes in right middle lobe it's actually part of the inferior part of the right upper lobe but they do extend in the right middle lobe as well then we have extensive um very bronchial thickening with mucus plugging. This could have been partially contributed by aspiration as the bowel is obstructed, but it could have been related to chronic airway disease as well. In the abdomen, I notice atrophic changes in the pancreas with calcifications related to chronic pancreatic inflammation. The portal vein looks a bit irregular and seems to have a bit of cavernous transformation. And then we see atrophic changes in uh, segments two, three, and part of the right hepatic lobe as well in segment six and seven. So this, this also looks quite chronic process, but we don't see any biliary obstruction or any definite mass lesions in the liver. Spleen is not enlarged. The right adrenal gland is normal. Left is slightly hyperplastic, but looks otherwise all right. Left kidney is quite atrophic and uh, small. The right kidney is all right. We don't see any lymph nodes. In the bones, uh, as we noticed on the scanogram, there looks like chronic changes going on in the left hip joint. It's the left femoral head is completely deformed and there is a nail in place. And then what else do you notice? There is generalized anasarca, isn't it? That could be due to this uh, obstruction as well, or it could be due to associated comorbidities. And we have actually, on this imaging, we have noticed several comorbidities, isn't it? This patient has chronic pancreatitis, they, they, they have poor renal function as well. And then we found some abnormality going on in the bones. And also there is abundant vascular calcification. In uncomplicated cases of stercoral colitis, if the ischemia has yet not ensued, they can have manual disimpaction of fecal matter or use of enema. But in complicated cases, if the ischemia is already developed or there, are, there is evidence of bowel perforation or uh, portal venous gas, then they need to have surgery. And uh, surgery is usually resection of that involved colonic segment with fashioning of a colostomy. But generally, these patients are already doing poorly because of their comorbidities. So it's very much a surgical decision. Find out the best management course for the patient. The only other thing that I would like to add here, although stercoral colitis is commonly seen in elderly, uh, as I discussed before, but young patients can also have, uh, rarely have stercoral colitis, especially if they have uh, some underlying neurological impairment. And sometimes use of opiates and uh, uh, medicines like tricyclic antidepressants that slow down the bowel movement, they can also predispose to colonic fecal infection and then which then can get complicated by colitis. All right, this is it for today. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more content. For any questions or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below. Until next time, happy learning.